Great. All right. Well, welcome everyone again um, for these fortnightly meetings on the cost of living. Uh, we've got a slightly lighter agenda today. So I'm going to be talking about a new hardship fund that um, Hackney Council in partnership with Hackney Migrant Centre has is going to be launching. And it's for people who have no recourse to public funds, which we know is a bit of a gap uh, in the system, really, where there's um, people who are living on very little um and so and there hasn't up until this point this year at least been a sort of crisis hardship fund for organizations working with those people to be able to access um and then just after that um or i might actually start with this next bit i'm going to talk about a workshop which i'm putting together which is to look at the council's offer on uh translation services and other sort of accessibility services for people who speak English uh, languages other than English. Um, so I'm going to actually just start with that because it's a slightly smaller item. And really what I'm looking for is particularly from the VCS partners that we've got on the call, but council too. Um, if you want to come and attend this workshop, then basically let me know because we're looking to um, include people who work with residents who require translation services basically so i just made a short note i'm hoping you can all see this someone say something if you can't because i can't see the screen anymore um but yeah we're running a workshop to discuss discuss improvements in the way we provide those services for people who don't speak or who speak languages other than english um so really we want to bring together different partners, different organisations who work in this space to sort of understand the barriers the residents face, how we can overcome those barriers, um, come together to co-produce um, improved services and improved policies so that we yeah, are able to overcome those barriers. Um, and also to understand how our partner organisations might actually be able to be involved in, in sort of um, in that provision. So not just um, Sort of raising the issues but also working in partnership with our vcs organizations in the borough to make the most of those sort of trusted relationships you have with residents um so yeah it's, it's a co-production workshop for a couple of hours uh on tuesday the 12th of september 11 till 1. um it's going to be in person i'm i'm looking for a location so if someone wants to be extra helpful and say come and do it at our hall or come and do it at our, at our our offices that would be even better but no pressure there obviously we're really just looking to um make sure that we've got all the all the people who have something to add and people who work in this space that are part of this workshop so it's going to be led by council williams who some of you may know um but myself and some of my colleagues that you will know from these calls will be there as well to sort of um help things run smoothly on the day so um yeah if you feel like this is something you'd be interested in or you're, one of your colleagues would be interested in attending um please let me know um we've got a number of partners already signed up but it's more the merrier really um and it should be a really good opportunity to actually hopefully sh help shape um council policy and help shape um an improved offer for the residents you work with so if that's something that sounds like uh, a good opportunity then please let me know i can share this little tiny little flyer that i did today uh, in the newsletter um so you can share it around your organization i'm going to stop sharing and uh i can see some people have got their hands up let me work out how to stop sharing yeah great genevieve i think you're you've got your yeah. hand up thanks john this is really great and timely um I was wondering, do you know if this will be able to incorporate any kind of Braille translation or op offer? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's mainly been focused on um, sort of community languages rather than... Like hearing yeah, impaired like, or rather, sight impaired? Rather than sort of disability, I suppose. But I guess if you meant in, re in sort of relation to... Let me think on that. It's mainly focused on community languages. Um, okay. It, it, it came exactly. up in another setting uh, actually yeah. earlier today about the need for some Braille support. Right. Anyway, thank you very much, John. This is great. Yeah, no worries. Um, <clears throat> anyone else got any questions about that workshop or anyone want to put, anyone, anyone want me to put them down on the list to attend? 
Um, if not, if you don't want to sort of um, volunteer now, then you can always obviously drop me a line and I can add you to the list. But um, yeah, it should be a good opportunity. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. That's useful. Yeah, I mean, there obviously is already an offer um, in terms of translation. It's just that we're aware that um, it's not perfect and it can become quite... Uh, there's sort of too much demand essentially for the food for the service as it stands. Um, Jocelyn, the workshop is 12th of September, 11 till 1. It's going to be in person. Obviously, it'll be somewhere in Hackney. Um, 11 till 1 on the 12th of September. Um, do you want me to put you down, Jocelyn? Martin, yep, I'll add you. I'm gonna. I'll send you an email, Justin. Anyway, um, with the details, and then you can you can let me know. Um, Mariana, I actually don't know the answer to that in terms of easy read versions of documents for people with learning disabilities. I know it's a requirement, isn't it? For for because I I did a leaflet the other day with something else, and we had to do an easy read version. So, Martin, do you Martin Mallet? Do, do you know the answer to that question in the chat? Not sure you can hear. Oh, I'm not sure, John. No, I'm not yeah, sure. I'm not either. Um, Mariana, if you want to um, email me, I can look into that for you. That's great, Jocelyn. I will put you down. Fantastic. Um, okay, cool. Uh, unless anyone else has got any other questions or or maybe that anyone's got any insights of working has anyone got any sort of experience of actually in trying to interact with the council when you're sort of advocating or working with a resident who doesn't speak english or doesn't speak english as a first language has anyone got any honest experiences they want to share about the service or perhaps not i know a lot of the time that family members and other members from the community end up having to sort of do this work on the behalf of residents if the sort of services at an official level aren't perfect but um if not, I can move on to the next project I wanted to talk about. Oh, Roland, did you want to come in? Yes, I, I've always had to use the language line as a means of uh, interviewing residents who uh, has English as a second language. Isn't, uh, I don't know what you, are you, what, what you have proposed, what you're asking for, in addition to using the language line, is that I don't understand the question. That's why I'm, I've raised my hand. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be to reflect on how well that's working, to look at any possible alternatives, to understand the level of demand on language line, really to get what a picture of how is the service currently working for people who who need it and work with residents right. and then to think about possible improvements um i guess there's there's sort of there's different ways of understanding how those improvements can be made i mean there's obviously with modern technology as it is i'm sure there are really quite sophisticated you know translation programs and that sort of thing um that oh. might be you know <laughs> extremely expensive or whatever but you know there's like there's the sort of digital route to this solution and, and there's sort of other ways of working more closely with with residents and, and community organisations as well. So it'll probably be a discussion around all of those things, really. But um, mm -hmm. if you want to attend and bring that insight of using language line to the workshop. Yeah, then, yeah. You know, it's, it's usually a, a three-way communication. Yeah. 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 OK, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Anyone else wanted to come in on using the council services before I move on to the next item? nope okay all right um the more yeah the more substantive item really on the agenda that i was going to speak about is yeah about a hardship fund that um the council and happy migrant center are launching uh, for people with no re recourse to public funds uh and i've got a few very rough and ready slides that put together and i also wanted to mention that um we have hanit on the call um from hackney migrant center who uh, is uh, their grants officer, um, who's 
um, has, has, yeah, has joined Tiny Migrant Centre to to um, help implement and make this grant a success. So um, yeah, welcome, Hanit. Great to have you on the call. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go through the slides that I've put together, and then again, and really similarly to the previous project, really what um, we're looking to get is a list of organisations, um, BCS partners, but also any count. I've already got quite a good list of council services of people who people who want to sort of access the fund. But yeah, if there's other council services you want to be able to access it, but really the emphasis being on VCS partners who feel like they work with residents with no with no recourse and they would really benefit from being able to access this fund. So I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, do, 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 do. And then right, hopefully you can all see this. Okay, so yeah, this is the NRPF Hardship Fund. So just a bit of context. So um, obviously, as many of you will know, residents with no recourse public funds are not eligible for nearly all forms of public funding support. So if welfare support, so universal credit, housing benefit, etc. So most of the sort of um, I suppose thinking about this meeting most of the things that we talk about in this meeting when it's sort of government support um this group of residents aren't actually eligible for all of that so there is a bit of a sort of gaping hole really in terms of how these residents can can uh, avoid falling into sort of destitution really so um this is why this hardship fund is really really important um so we did uh, run a previous hardship fund of about 70k for people with no recourse that was administered through SWIM who are another charity based in the borough um, and other VCS partners and this will work in a similar way um, we've got um, in total um, we've got a grant of 100k um, but 35,000 of that is going towards improving advice provision in the borough um, for people with no recourse um, and 65k of it yeah it's going towards uh this hardship fund which is going to be administered by Hanley migrant centre um and Hanit who's obviously on the call uh and it'll be delivered on a at first on delivered on a first come first serve basis um we might we might sort of um review that depending on how it goes but yeah that's that's how it will be launched um so the criteria Fairly simple. We want to make sure the right people to get the get the help, obviously. So obviously you have to have no recourse to public funds um, and have a connection or be living in uh, Hackney and are in a form of crisis. Um, this is obviously quite hot. It's obviously crisis is quite a, quite a broad term. And the bit are there about sort of alternative support solution and, and solutions for being exhausted. Um, I don't think on the application process it will necessarily ask for a great deal of proof that you know a part a, a referrer has gone around you know all the other options and this is you know a last resort but we all obviously obviously want to make sure that it reaches the people most in need that's why that's in there really um so this is the provisional payment structure it might have some small amendments but basically we're looking at yeah 100 pounds uh one off payments for adult um and a 50 pound per dependent and a cap of 250 pounds per applicant we also are keen to um, meet the need around emergency accommodation as well. We know that that's one of the key needs of this group of residents, and so there will be a, there might be a separate sort of payment structure for those costs as well. If someone needs, you know, a, a bed for a couple of nights, that sort of thing. Um, so that will also be communicated once we understand who wants to be able to access the fund. Uh, and yeah, please get in touch with me if you want to be able to, uh, if your organisation feels like it would benefit from being able to apply um, for these for these payments for, for their residents. This is a sort of rough application process. We've tried to keep this pretty simple. Um, so there's there's an online form, which is fair, which yeah, is pretty simple, which um, referrers will fill out. Um, and then Henit will, um, will obviously look at those applications. Um, you are able to ring, you'll be able to ring um, HMC and provide those details over the phone, but I think um, we definitely want the form to be the, the sort of the first uh, port of call if you want to make an application, um, uh, just so um, it's all kept in one place. Um, Penny then uh, will review the requests uh, and contact the applicant directly, device if they're successful and how much grant has been awarded. 
Um, obviously, if the applicant hasn't got a phone number, then it'll be done via the referring organisation. So um, yourselves, if you want to put yourself forward. Um, and yeah, if it's for emergency accommodation, so you know they haven't got anywhere to go that very day, then um, you can call and eat directly, so it can be processed um, uh, quicker. Um, and then in terms of the sort of how they actually access the cash, if they've got a bank account, um, that's obviously the easiest way of doing it. So we can so the money can be transferred to their bank account. Um, if they don't, they can either collect the uh the, the cash from h the Hackney market center's drop-in center which is on wednesdays or from the uh or from the partner organization so yourselves or the council service that's made the application on behalf of the resident um and the and he will be able to drop off that cash um to the to the to, to your office basically and the resident can get it from there um and just finally yeah refer to the expectation of the applicant uh, and say that the request will be reviewed and he will call them within one week to let them know the outcome. So um, just to set those expectations that people are aware of um, sort of how long it might take to actually get the get the cash. Um, so the next steps, we're aiming for the applications to be open during August. We're running to quite a uh, tight deadline, I suppose, and we want to um, get this going as soon as possible, really. Um, obviously, make sure we do it right, but. Um, yeah, just want to make sure that this, this group of residents is able to access the support as soon as possible. Once we have a list of the partners who want to be able to make applications for residents, we'll be holding a meeting um, to sort of go over what I've already said, but also, you know, answer any questions and provide a bit more detail about the process. Um, uh, so, yeah, once I've got a list of people who want to be able to apply, I'll be setting up that meeting with Hanit and Charlotte, who's the Chief Executive of Happy Migrant Centre. And, yeah, as I mentioned before, I'll probably review the applications after eight weeks and just to see where we're at in terms of numbers and where the, uh, where the residents um, are getting the help. So that is my slides. Um, and, yeah, really, really keen to... Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen uh really keen to understand from people on the call if you're interested in your organization being able to make applications it's, it's going to be a really simple process we hope um so if you want to be added to the list so you'll be invited to that launch meeting um please let me know great penny i will add idia's uh kitchen to the list and you'll get an invite from me um honey i don't know if you wanted to say anything else you don't don't feel you have to but if you wanted to add anything that i might have missed then feel free no, I think you covered everything, but hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hanit. I'm the Hardship Grand Officer at HMC. Um, yeah, I think I think John's covered basically everything. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Um, I can pop my email in the chat. Um, but yeah, we're really looking forward to hopefully having some of you on board. Um, yeah, it'd be great. Great to see you at the meeting. Thanks, Hanit. Um, Penny, do you want to come in? Yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, the referral form, is it quite straightforward? Like, how in-depth is it? It's just I'll be doing the, the work remotely. Um, so, like, someone will call me and tell me their situation, and then I'll want to speak to them remotely. Do you think that's possible? Did you um, want to ask that, Annie? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely should be possible. Um, the form is, as sim I've made it as simple as it, as we can make it. So it's basically yes, no tick boxes for most things with a few mm. written answers um, for things like, you know, explaining their circumstances, why they're applying for the fund, and there's a couple other written answers. But um, for the most part, it's just it's just ticks and you can do them over the phone. Mm. Um, there isn't, we're not asking for a written signature because I think that would make things quite complicated with scanning mm. documents and endings. So there's just a, um, there'll be a GDPR sort of privacy policy notice at the bottom that you can just read out they can give you verbal consent and tick and then submit mm -hmm. and that should be the end of it and then i'll get in contact with your visitor mm -hmm. um and set up payment with them directly um yeah. and if they struggle with that then then i would try and do it through the referral partner yeah. perfect thank you thanks great anyone else got any questions about this or anyone else unsure if they want to put themselves forward but wants uh, some clarity that hopefully we can provide. Genevieve, do you want to come in? Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Honey. Just curious if the money is only going to be paid either to the referring organization or the client where there'll be payments to third party, like uh, an emergency housing, would that be paid directly to the 
housing provider for that night or two? Yes, so exactly like you said, it would, um, first of all, would it, would it be going to the client directly? If the client can't receive the funds directly, then to the referral partner. But if it's for emergency accommodation, then there is a note on the form to contact me directly immediately um, so that I can hopefully get that set up for that night. And then I would, well, we would pay the funds directly to the emergency accommodation. Thank you. Brilliant. Anyone else? I will share my slides uh, in the newsletter that goes out. So you'll have them and the document earlier on the translation stuff. Anyone else got any questions on Thanks, Hanit. Yeah, please do send any questions to myself and Hanit um, on this. Uh, if a person needs more than one or two nights emergency accommodation, would you be able to support? I think it's probably down to cost, isn't it? We haven't quite got that payment structure on the emergency accommodation thing set, uh, element settled yet. So we probably, I don't know, I don't know what you think, Hanit, but I imagine there'll yeah, be a sort of limit on, on that. And it yeah. will depend on that limit, I suppose. What do you think? Yeah. It's a really good question. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this recently um, as to how, yeah, for what length of time we could provide support. Um, the fund is supposed to be sort of one-off payments, um, not continued support. So it would be for a limited amount of time. Um, but especially where someone has children, I need to talk to... Um, and we need to talk sort of in-house about how how we'll look to deal with that um, and whether there's further support we could provide um, outside the fund that would ensure that these people uh, these people have housing. Um, so it's something that still needs to be hashed out, but thank you for raising it. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. It's something we can we can pick up and hopefully address in that um, in the launch meeting that we have with with partners. Uh, good question, Manette, thanks. Anyone else got any questions or or like reflections on working with people with no recourse? Anything that you should be wanted to raise or things that we you know should be aware of in terms of implementing the fund or particular areas of need that you come across or anything on this issue of NRPF would be great to hear from from anyone. Annie, you're going to come in. Yeah, sorry, it's just I've noticed that a lot of needing help with um, oyster cards like top ups and gas and electric, um, so they do ask for that very often and. There's other organisations that we can link with and try and support them. But yeah, travel costs. Yeah. And electric. Yeah, it comes up time and again, travel mm. costs. Because often people can't actually get they might there might be some form of support available in one part of the borough or one part of East London or whatever, and they can't actually get to it just because they mm. haven't got the funds in the first place to get the bus or get an oyster card or whatever it mm. might be. Yeah, it's, it, that always comes up. It's a really good point. Anyone else want to come in? Okay, well, you've got my email and you've got Hanit's email. So um, if anyone else wants, you know, to discuss it more in detail or just wants to put themselves uh, on the list to be able to access it, then give us a shout. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about it. And I think it should be a really important um, a really important provision in the form of help for people in the borough so um yeah we're looking forward to getting it launched um that concludes my yeah we've got you melanie um that concludes my two items for this week um two fairly short items we usually we're sort of wrapping up at sort of quarter past half past five but um yeah that was it from me really i don't know if anyone else we usually sort of open up the floor at this point to see if anyone else has anything they want to talk about or any burning questions around sort of cost of living and poverty reduction in general any any gripes you might have with something that you feel needs to be improved at the council or anything that your organization is working on that you wanted to shout out shout out about and promote then now's your chance so um please come in anyone who wants to fill this space or we'll wrap up. <laughs> up to you. Genevieve. Sorry, I've been a busy girl today. <laughs> I know. It's all good. <laughs> but well. um, I just wanted to share that the the council is developing its borough wide strategy for hot weather SWEP, you know, the severe weather emergency planning because of hot weather. We have we've just about finished our uh, draft to support our rough sleepers. And I wanted to share that document 
uh, with this group today. It is a draft. There are a couple of things that still need adding, but I thought I'd share that. So it's about to go on our website um, and hopefully by next summer, we'll have a full council wide strategy implementation ready. But for now, this is to let you know sort of what our plans are to support the rough sleeping community. Thanks. Brilliant, thanks Genevieve. Am I able to share this through the newsletter or is it? Yeah? Yes, thank you. Yeah, it, right. it's, like I said, it's a draft. You'll see a yeah. couple of things still don't have an active link on them, but I think for now it's good stuff. Perfect. And when when is it likely to be um, actually launched? Is it, is it sort of feedback still welcome or? Um, I don't think we're looking for feedback at this point. It's just, I think really yeah. I've got the, the next week, 10 days, I'm trying to get it ready back to Rob so he can approve it to put on the website. Great. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll put it out in the newsletter so people are aware of it. Great. Thanks. Anyone else want to come in at this point? Oh, Penny, you put something in the chat. Martin, did you want to come in? Yeah, hi there. Hi. Um, I just checked two of my colleagues in the comms team regarding uh, producing easy to read documents. It was a question that uh, came in earlier. Um, and we have produced them. I'm told that a Sarah Bainbridge is the person to contact. Um, so I can put her. Uh, name in chat. Um, Great, thanks, Martin. Yeah. And does she, she, does she oversee all the easy read, easy read work at the council then, Martin? Um, yeah, I think she's part of uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, the HWB strategy project team, I think. Oh, the health and wellbeing board. Yeah, yeah, yeah health and wellbeing, yeah. Cool. Penny, did you want to um, speak briefly about your message in the chat? Yeah, it's fine. So we got um, approved for the top up grant to help residents with advice and signposting. So rather than having a cramped space and trying to organise that, I've hired out the youth room next door um, just for a two hour slot. And it's quite a big room. So rather than me trying to get through the queue, it just makes sense to fill up the room with other organisations. I was even thinking I'll contact like Citizens Advice, Hoxton Trust, Shoreditch Trust, anything that's going to help any happy residents, really. And then it gives them, yeah, it, it reaches that part that most people don't get. Well, most of happy, maybe there's, there's pockets where people don't get any help or they're too scared to go to the organisations themselves. So I just think it would be a really good chance to share the space. Yeah, fantastic. That sounds really good. Um... And obviously, I'll be um, qualifying the residents if they show me proof of benefits and to qualify for the food voucher. But I'm not shouting about that to the <laughs> to the customers or beneficiaries because I don't don't want to run out of vouchers and miss people out. So I'm going to make sure we keep that quiet. Yeah. Once they qualify, then I'll slip them the voucher to help them. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fight on my hands. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds like the right approach. Um, am I right to share that in the newsletter as well? Yeah. Yeah. Go. yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Cool. That sounds like a really good, really good initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else want to come in? I am very much looking to fill the agendas for the next few meetings over the summer. So if anyone wants to kindly volunteer to um it doesn't have to be doesn't it? You don't have to present on anything like new that some you know shiny new initiative, but just even just to give an overview of what your organization does <coughs> would be would be uh, greatly appreciated. So if anyone wants to, Janice, did you want to come in? Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. 
Hi, I know a little while ago um, on here there was an organisation which was looking for anyone who was could get hold of phones or mm. SIM cards. I, I was just wondering how they got on or is that still floating around because I've got an old age pensioner that would I could you know that could really do with a phone just as a form of contact when he's out and about yeah that's a good question uh I'm not sure what happened with that to be to, yeah. to be completely honest um I can link look into I don't know if anyone on the call knows of any organizations that provide cheap or free phones for for residents penny do you yeah. know if, sometimes we get them or we're able to source them so where does he live close to Haggerston at all uh no this yeah. is a Woodbury Down resident both, right. I've actually got two and both of them are Woodbury sort of Woodbury Downside residents right okay it's a bit far for them to come isn't it it's yeah but I could it, I yeah. could if it meant that they were available I could get that to them via a, a, a visit because I'm visiting them regularly because I've yeah. just done assessments and stuff with them so I've got to do follow-up so that could be possible and they're not looking for a smartphone, just a basic phone with buttons. Just a basic to... phone yeah. at the moment. It's just so that, that one of them is just so that she can keep in contact with her because we're trying to decant her, but she keeps offering, asking strangers on the street for a phone call and we can't return the call. Yeah. So it's, and, you know, it's a bit crazy. I think we still have some SIM cards left from Vodafone, which would give him six month calls and text. Oh, wow. That would be wonderful. The other one, he's just bit prone to falls when he's out but he's never used a sort of mobile phone in his life so if you send me an email i'll get in touch with Ina and try and set something up for you to collect some that'd be wonderful yeah. thank you so much penny no problem much appreciated you're welcome see that's why people should come to these meetings because that's <laughs> great <awesome. laughs> yeah, exactly. um shade do you want to come in uh, I, I was just going to say, um, I think uh, Marcella uh, Leitch, who I don't, I'm not sure if she's joined, she was able to get SIM cards for residents. I think there was a case where she was all, also able to get a mobile phone. Um, I, I was sent, and someone from my team was able to get a mobile phone. I just can't remember how she did it. So I, I'll just uh, speak to uh, the Monarchy email, uh, Janice, maybe, uh, to let you know. That would uh, be it, wonderful. Sure if you, you just share your email in in the chat, and then I'll, I will I'll get do. Back to you. I'll do that now. Thank no you worries. so much, guys. Shall no I tell if you can let me know if you do find that it would be good for us to connect as well? Yeah, that would yeah, be. yeah. I, I'm not sure how. Yeah, but I know we were able to get one person resident, elderly resident, a phone as well. But yeah, I'll come back to you guys. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Shahido and Penny. That's really good. Um, oh. Anyone else um, have any burning questions or feel like there's a need they've got for a resident that might be able to be sorted out here or any advice people are looking for on a particular case or group of residents? Nope. Okay. I think we'll wrap it up there then. Um, obviously, the recording will go out in the newsletter and for those of you who are like watching it back, you can do that. It'll be on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I'll put all the stuff I've mentioned today out in the newsletter, the slides about the NLPF fund and the translation workshop leaflet, um, and all the stuff that's in the chat that we've agreed about in the newsletter will be there as well. So um, great to have you all on the call. Um, thanks for coming along. I hope you found it useful. And yeah, do get in touch with me if you if you have a burning desire to present at a future meeting. Um, just let me know. You've all got my email, so that'll be really good. Uh, all right, thanks a lot, guys. I uh, will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.